Hey everybody and welcome back to the Java Game Archive. This is about the tenth time I've tried to film this because uh, my mic decides not to work, the footage decides not to capture, and someone decides that it's cool to mow their lawn at 8.30 in the evening. I don't know what's wrong with the world, but we're here and we're covering a lost Star Trek game. If you couldn't tell from the title, Star Trek Nemesis. This is based on the final film of the TNG era, and it is a Star Trek game that uh, no one talks about. And there are a couple of lost Star Trek games on the J2ME platform. And this one is one that even surprised me because I remember this film back in 2002. Now, this was actually a big deal. There were news reports about this game in late 2002 on business websites and the like. This is before real video gamey websites existed uh, as they do today there was a big deal to make uh, Star Trek's debut I guess onto 3G mobile phones which was Java based stuff and we did for a good long time think that Java J2ME was going to be the future of games. It came in three flavors uh, Micro Edition J2ME which is I believe this one there's one for Qualcomm Brew um, and some other ones and this coincided with the film. It released right alongside the film. So it was out there. And it was done by Informa Games. And they've been around for quite some time. This was actually their first release back in 2003. They would go on to do a number of big tie-in games. Including a Elder Scrolls game. A couple of Call of Duties. Uh, they did some Marvel stuff. They did Guitar Hero 3. Uh, and they did balloons of all things for I believe the DS but their big big title at least for me would be Prey Mobile back in 2009 to coincide with the release of the original Prey and now someone decides that it's a good time to have their motorcycle go out at nine o'clock in the evening uh, and drive us all insane but we're gonna press forward so if you can see on the screen here this is Star Trek Nemesis. It's a very Star Trek y display. You got the Enterprise, the logo of the film, and all done in the Elkar's menu system. But you'll notice that it is all in German. That is because, uh, as far as my knowledge and the research we've done, we cannot come across an English version of Star Trek Nemesis. Now, we don't know if that's because it didn't get released in English countries or if it was just released in Germany. Um, but. We do believe there is an English version out there, so if you know about it, have it, have information on it, go ahead and please let that in the comments below so we can check that out. But uh, I will be doing my best to translate German uh, in embarrassing the heritage of my father's side, uh, even though I should probably know a little bit. So let's take a look at this screen. We have play at the top. Uh, we got help, which goes into some details on stuff. You got volume on or off. Volume is on. But no volume comes in through this emulator, or it does a little bit, but not much. Uh, then you have right there a volume quit, and then you have high score down at the bottom. So let's go and hit the play button and see what we can do. Okay, and here we go. Let's see if we can translate this and see. Captain's log. Uh, we're tracking the Romulan dissident Shinzon. His ship is uh, a weapon and he wants to blow up all life on Earth and destroy the United Federation of Planets. Yeah, eh, I think that's a pretty good translation on that. Okay, next. Uh, we got uh, data saying we've entered the basin or whatever the rift was, I believe, in the film. Okay, next on that, I believe it's five. Oh, okay, next. We uh, inform Starfleet uh, that we are following the scimitar. It's Picard saying that. Data saying uh, something, communication is impossible at long range. Uh, something about being in the basin, okay. Everyone at battle stations. It's pretty self-explanatory then. Uh, data says, we are being attacked by an unknown ship with disruptor fire, as we see on the screen. Okay, next. And then Data uh, Shinzon is hailing us. 
Although the direct translation here is, I think it's a Shinzong call us, <laughs> which is weird enough. Uh, okay, next. And then Picard says on screen. Okay, oh boy, we got some wordy stuff here. Okay, I'm going to try to do my best here. Um, we both know I can blow you up at any time, lower your shields uh, to get beamed up. I don't care about your ship or her crew. Something about a hundred light years, I think. Uh, something will happen, get out of here. Essentially, he's just saying, I can blow you up at any time, prepare to be beamed over. Because I think at this point of the movie, this is the end of the film. Uh, and he needs his blood or something. So next, uh, you know that's not possible. Perkhard responds and more diatribe from Jinzon. Um, everyone's going to die. You can't save your home planet or something. Jean-Luc, let's fight each other. Uh, I have something in store for you. I think it says that. And then Data says, Captain, several Romulan ships are entering the sector. That's not good. Next, and then Picard says, uh, Mr. Data, uh, little shields and weapons online. Okay, and then we start the game. Now, this is a simulation. Uh, now, you have to remember, this was on a mobile phone about 120 by 120 in size, tiny. And you can see the playable area is even smaller, but that does allow... I guess a little bit more animation and action to be taking place. Now you have a couple of things. You have phasers, which you can see here. You have photon torpedoes and quantum torpedoes. And you are fighting the, um, I guess, I don't even know what f that ship was ever described in the film. Is it the Valdor? Or Valdor class maybe or something like that? Uh, but in the film at this point, you're not actually being attacked by them. You're actually, they're actually on your side. Uh, the Romulans come to help you and get wiped out pretty quickly. I think two of those ships come in. We've blown up more than two of them. So you go from sector to sector warping in and out. But what's interesting here is that you're not only fighting those Romulan uh, ships, you're actually fighting the Scorpion-class fighters. Now, though, if you remember the film, there was a scene where you are on the scimitar and you escape. And you do so in one of the fighter craft, which don't make a lot of sense in the world of Star Trek, but we'll let that slide here. Uh, and in this film, or in this game, they are in action. Now, you can warp between sectors, uh, and here's a good chance to take a look at some of the stuff going on. You can see that the game takes place on the bridge screen of the Enterprise. You have your photon torpedo layout, or loadout, and you have three quantum torpedoes. Uh, below that, you have two gauges that you have to monitor. You have your phasers and your shields. And you have the option to shift energy between the two, which will uh, slowly help to recharge them. And you're going to have to do that between the two. You can't just keep it on phasers to do a lot of damage. You can't just keep it on shields uh, because you need them to be brought back up. Now, there are deaths in this game, but it is essentially because it's a mobile game unlimited continues but there is a way to recharge your shields your phasers and your quantum and photon torpedoes uh, two ways one is to beat a section uh, like we just did they will be recharged once we enter war the other is so you can see that right there they recharged is uh, heading to a star base and you have a couple of options on that and we'll see that in a little bit uh, and go on to that so the most difficult part of this game is dealing with the plasma torpedoes from the romulan ships because they're so small uh, moving in this game is a pain in the ass as you can imagine an old cell phone game would be you can't really press two buttons at the same time uh, you can either go up, down, left, or right. You can't hit them back-to-back -back kind of thing and kind of twitch around. So you're very limited. Not a huge deal on the Romulan Warbirds because they're f easy to, to get a hold of. More difficult on the Scorpion Fighters uh, and even more difficult on the Plasma Torpedoes. But you kind of just get into this gameplay loop. You, you phaser the uh, Scorpion Fighters and then you can phaser the Romulan ships but they keep at a distance and it's best to lock onto them which is automatic once you kind of touch them for a second uh, and shoot them now you can see my shields and my phasers 
are about empty, but I beat that right at the last second, and they will be recharged here coming into this next segment. But what isn't recharged is your photons and your quantums, and you'll see that become a problem. You can unload them on enemies as much as you want, but it's going to cause you some problems. So when you get to next levels like this, the game doesn't change. It just throws in more enemies. And as you can see, we've already destroyed more Romulans than in every single series of the Star Trek universe. <laughs> um, at this point, there's no need for any other ships that the Enterprise can destroy. Uh, all of these ships so here it's gonna ask me to divert energy because when you have no phasers left You're not gonna be able to do anything. I am out of photon torpedo So I can't do anything about these warbirds uh, until I am shooting them with okay So there that warp signal so when you're about to die You have the option to warp out and it's gonna take you to a star base which doesn't make sense in terms of the film because the <laughs> what's the point of, of being in the rift is you can just head out but what you want to do is you want to line up your crosshair against that little blinking red dot and it's pretty easy when you're at starbase your left and right kind of moves automatically you just kind of have to tap it in the direction it continues to move and then you recharge your shields your phasers and you get a full spread of photons and quantums now you don't have an unlimited warp jump ability um, you get a couple of those and then you will die But when you restart you just restart at Wherever you left off now if you warp in and out when you do come back to that sector uh, You pick up right where you left off So if you were right about to end the sector with a couple of kills you can pick up right as you want But if you die you restart that sector from the beginning and as you can see I'm just getting worked over this because they're just going to throw more and more stuff. But thankfully, we pass that sector right at the last possible second. We warp in, we get new shields and new phasers. And this kind of gameplay loop just sorts of repeats. And you go over and over and over until you finally, at the end of it, reach the scimitar. And you do battle with Shinzon. Now, I've never actually beaten the game. Mostly because it gets incredibly, incredibly hard. Uh, and it's already fairly ridiculous. At this point, really easy just to run out of power. Now, in terms of gameplay, there's a fair amount of stuff going on. You actually have to contend with quite a bit of action on the screen. And you're managing a bunch of systems at the same time. Not super in-depth. But you got to remember, you're on a keypad of a cell phone, right? So to check your phasers and your shields, to shift between them at the proper times, to keep an eye on your photon torpedoes, on your quantum torpedoes, making sure you unload right there like that when you're locked, which you can easily miss. Also at the same time, dealing with plasma torpedoes, you're dealing with the scorpion fighters, and then remembering to hit the warp when that comes out. There's quite a bit going on here uh, that while it's not deep, it's five stages long, uh, it's one of those things where it does get pretty hectic, but it's really only hard because of the control. So here we're going to die, uh, and that is it and then we restart. So let's give this another go. We'll jump back into Sector 4 here. Uh, I cut out a couple of repetitions in between this because I was stuck on this stage for a long, long time. <laughs> and uh, it's one of those things that's probably better suited for Twitch as you probably don't want to sit through 15, 20, 30 minutes of repeating this same stage over and over again. But uh, we do come away a little bit better here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's luck or if you just kind of get used to the controls because, of course, this is emulated. Uh, I'm using the numpad on my keyboard, which is pretty close to what the layout is of an old cell phone. So, we got it. We go forward uh, to get some more juice and some more stuff we come back into sector four and i believe we are going to luck out with a full spread of everything uh thankfully that starbase saved us so uh, 
I'm pretty sure these are all randomly generated wherever they're coming from dependent on your uh, positioning no one's gonna come from behind you right they're all kind of just on screen but we did it oh sweet okay so let's go and see what happens next this is should be the last stage sector 4 we'll warp into sector f okay so this looks like it says ah Picard now there are only two of us left or should I say one and that's that's basically a direct line lifted right from the film there's only the what is it what do you say the echo becomes the voice or some uh, some really badly <laughs> written dialogue uh, but that's that so let's go next okay then we got Picard saying it doesn't have to end like this you always have uh, the choice to like, make the right choice yeah you have a choice make the make a better choice or whatever again another I think paraphrased line from the film okay next Okay, we got a little more from Shinzon here. He says, uh, I'm going to show you my true self, my nature, uh, something, the earth is going to be destroyed. Don't forget, I am Shinzon uh, of Remus. And then something, I, what I said last time about his voice, he talks about his voice. Uh, my voice will continue on while yours uh, has faded, Picard. Next. Okay, we're back to data. Uh, Captain, uh, I can modify the sensors so we can get a bead on the scimitar when when it's discovered and uh, we can send a torpedo. Uh, yeah, we can send a torpedo uh, when we find it. So essentially, it's just like the film. They're triangulating uh, their shots. And I'm going to hit it with photon torpedoes. Okay, next. Okay, and here we go into Sector 5, the end segment of the game. Now, this is the final fight, the boss fight against Shinzon and his scimitar class. Uh, Warbird, the monstrous ship that makes no sense in the Star Trek universe. Uh, and would mean the destruction of everyone if it actually came into play. But this is an easy fight. Now it's easy because they can't do much with this fight. You can't have any new animations. You can't drop any new weapons or any. We're dealing with kilobits of space. So it's just a JPEG, uh, or I guess a PNG of the scimitar cut out that just kind of comes at you or grows in size and reduces in size. So you do kind of have to fight it like you do, like they do in the film. You target it, um, and then you can lock it into place, and then you unload into it. But really, the only challenge here is dealing with those plasma torpedoes, which is much easier uh, when there's only one ship shooting at them. And again, you'd still get your warp drive to head to Starbase. So let's do that. Let's grab a little juice, and we'll come back to end this fight so he doesn't take a lot of damage I don't believe you can hit him with torpedoes right now uh, it doesn't seem to be registering any damage I think it's all uh, phasers but you can lock onto him and shoot so it there you're not getting a lot of response from the bad guys so you don't really know what you're doing they don't have life bars or anything but we'll keep doing this and there, now he is in the lock position, and I'm just going to unload 13, 12, 11, I'm out of quantums, 10 torpedoes, divert energy, blow him out of the... We just unloaded 20 photon torpedoes into this guy. Scimitar destroyed, and that's it. We're out of here. And it looks like we just warp back home. Sector 5 completed. Okay, and now let's take a look at what we get to end the game with. Uh, we get Captain's Log. Uh, my nemesis has been defeated in Earth. Uh, and Starfleet are saved. <laughs> Does it really translate to my nemesis has been defeated? That's the name of the film. 
Oh, I oh, I'm glad that's not <laughs> in the film. It's not a great film, but that surely would have made it uh, much worse. Okay, next. <laughs> no, okay. Um, I guess that's it. Oh, yeah, that's it. It brings us right back to the main menu. Interesting. Okay, so that's uh, Star Trek Nemesis, a full playthrough. Would probably take you roughly around 20 minutes, which is actually, I'd say, a decent amount. I think that was the the average for a full, what they would consider full game with a beginning, middle, and end, a story-based game. Uh, most of these J2ME games are, you know, bowling or cars or something like that. Uh, but overall, I think it was okay for the time. Um, not my favorite. Uh, I wouldn't play it regularly because it's so limiting. But for a first outing from a company, I don't think that's too bad. Uh, I am excited to actually track down some of their other titles. Elder Scrolls would be interesting. I have a feeling that one is probably a classic dungeon crawler sort of thing. I uh, like the original ones in that series. And then, of course, I'd like to see some uh, some of their last stuff they did on J2ME. So that's it for this episode of Java Archive. Thank you for sticking it with us to the end. Uh, if you want to help this channel and this show continue, the best thing you can do is just like, comment, and subscribe. Share this around. Uh, that's the best uh, thing you can do for us that will keep us making content. We hope this is now a regular series. Uh, if we can, we'd like to do twice a week, if not at the very least once a week, either on Tuesdays or Thursdays, uh, and we'll see how it grows from there. Uh, once again, thank you. If you have any games that you remember back in the day on your old flip phones, drop them in the comments. We're going to do our best to track them down. Uh, this isn't just a video archive series. We're actually doing our best to try to archive as many J2ME games uh, so we can upload them. Uh, and save them for posterity. So until next time, thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.